good to be here. That I've always been at home, you know, and I've always bragged about Lockhart because this place has always had a place in my heart. And I've always loved it. And God has really, really blessed this church all through the years. And I praise him for all that he has done. And I know that I got my training here for life's work. And so it's so good to have you, and I'm glad my folks are here today, too. I'm so glad. And, uh, but anyway, I have a scripture, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, lean not unto thine own understanding, and all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. I will tell you the work of the Holy Spirit, how he has led me in all my work. You know, a missionary, we don't preach. <laughs> We just tell of what God has done through us on the mission field. So I wonder how many here today uh, was living August 1930. Anyone? Mm. August 1930. Well, I, you know, I joined the church July 27, 1930. <laughs> 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 so anyway, the second, I just want to take the second, the second week in. Uh, uh, August. I don't know if you remember that. Do you remember that great revival that God gave us where we didn't have any pray for revival? Well, it happened. On the second Sunday night, August the second, uh, second Sunday night in August, 1930. We came, we were now sitting right down there in one of those seats. Preacher Mama preached, and he got up and he said, uh, he came down to the front, and he said, Charlie Kelly is here today, this, tonight, and says, I want him to come up and give his testimony. So, uh, uh, Charlie had uh, been called to preach, and he had resisted preaching for several years. And during the revival that I was saved in, he came back to the Lord. So, Charlie came up and gave his uh, testimony, and eight people were saved. And Preacher Norman said, come back tomorrow night. <laughs> well, we came back on Monday night, and that choir began to sing, and people came in off the street to be saved. It was absolutely wonderful. He didn't get to preach that night. <laughs> he did. So it was just absolutely wonderful all week. The Holy Spirit really was filled all over this time. It was when we were out on the street praising the Lord at 2 o'clock in the morning. It was just wonderful. And I praise the Lord that I had the opportunity of uh, being a part of that. Then in 1932, uh, Preacher Norman got J. Harold Smith to come and, uh, uh, for revival. So that Sunday morning, he preached on the stewardship of your life. He said, maybe you've been born again, but have you committed your life? And I was in the choir. Uh, the choir was over here then. So I was in the choir. I said, well, I haven't done that. I'll just go. I knew I'd been saved. But, uh, and I, so I came down here to the front, and I said, Lord, I'm yours. I, I give you everything my life, and I'll go wherever you lead. So I surrendered everything to the Lord. And about two weeks later, on Sunday night, I was in the choir, and the Lord called me. Well, I was on the way home up the hill, going up the hill there, and the devil said, don't you tell anybody what happened there tonight. <laughs> I said, devil, I didn't have anything to do with it. I said, God called me. <laughs> <laughs> so from there, some time later, some months later there, after that, Miss Norman took a crowd of us young people to the First Lady Church of uh, Farmer to hear Miss Neil Young speak. Well, my heart was broken. I just thought I had to go to Africa. And so I knew I had to have training to go. So I was accepted at Moody Bible Institute in Chicago, along with Ruth Bowen and Nellie Meg. Y'all remember them? All three of them. And Nellie and, and, Nellie and uh, Ruth found out a husband, but I didn't. 